Hello and welcome to Wolf for United WFC. Hello, welcome back to All for United WFC. It's not a live show today, but we have got something a little bit different. Um, as soon as I saw this article come out, I was straight in David's inbox over there. <laughs> Let's discuss this article because it is uh, brilliantly written. Obviously, if people don't know, uh, David Astill, Head of Women's Football um, at Total Football Analysis, has done a fantastic article that we're going to get into in a moment. And also another article that's just come out today at the time of recording on the Euros as well, which will be in the description as well, because that is a hell of a read that I'm going to have to, <laughs> have to go through later on as well um firstly david welcome to the channel um you how are you me. doing yeah very good thank you yeah thank you for having me glad to hear it um we'll dive straight into it then um i'm going to bring the article on screen um and we'll go through it like that so this is the article obviously that we're going to be going through today the one that you uh, wrote up the other day um obviously in relation to jackie groton now obviously jackie's a hot topic at the moment um, surrounding Manchester United, the rumours uh, potentially signing a two-year extension at United. Obviously, Juventus interested. There's a couple of other clubs as well that are obviously in talks um, potentially as well. Um, so, just your kind of initial, I guess, reasoning to, to wanting to write this article uh, on Jackie, because obviously there's plenty of players that you could have chose in and around United. Obviously, that potentially leaving as well. Um, just your reasoning to for choosing Jackie, really plays such an underrated role um, as someone pointed out you know that you, you've got you've got your Ella Toons, you've got your Bilderberg Reese's you've got your um, Alessia Russo's Kirsty Hansen's League there's so many other really big names in the team but actually it's the defensive midfielder almost it's the most underrated team it's a bit like a Barcelona Patrick Gohara I think is the most underrated player and I think you know Gronin's a bit like that she does a lot of the stuff that you don't see on the pitch such as breaking play up making passes being intelligent around the pitch and, and starting attacks so I think actually it was important for me to to highlight that and to to you know to draw attention to the fact that she plays such a big role in what happens ahead of her in the final third uh, when it comes to United's attacking. So that's that's the reason I really wanted to do it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it makes sense because I think it's I'll, I'll scroll down a little bit here and we'll talk about limits and options first. Obviously that's the first piece in the article. But I think it's when you're looking at Jackie, particularly last season, a lot of United fans were scratching their head, going, "Why is she not playing more?" You know, there was a lot mm. of. Um, debates in and around the fan base obviously there was she played a bit at the start of the season and kind of fell out same with Vilda Borisa really kind of came in and out of the side and that's yeah. gonna be one of my questions later on about those two in terms of how they can play together because that is most United fans dream obviously we may not see it if she moves on um but that is the the dream for most United fans and um, we'll talk about this one first and I think I guess my first kind of question when I first read this and looked at that that image in particular, obviously, from the from the City game, it's almost a double pivot when you're looking at that too there. Obviously, it's yeah. and, and and Jackie in there. Obviously, for the Netherlands, it's slightly different. She's obviously playing in a three for a lot of that time uh, over the Netherlands as well. Do you just kind of explain your thought process? Obviously, writing up that piece there in terms of limiting options, there is a photo, which I'll come to in a second. But do you think that is better for her playing in a two or a three? Because we seem to see the better of her, obviously, in a three, particularly from last season at Netherlands. Yeah, I, th I think actually a three is probably better because when she gets the ball, she then has immediate options available to her. When you've got this sort of system, it's a bit more difficult because the passes have to be a bit longer, which means there's more risk of it being intercepted either aerially or on the ground. But I think actually having her in this sort of defensive midfield role is really important because um, Mark Skinner's tactics, when he played, when he uh, coached Orlando before coming to United, he tended to favour wingers rather than Casey Stoney who had sort of wide forwards who cut inside. He, he favours much more traditional wingers like Hansen, like Galton. So that's why I think we've seen a bit more of them. But then to make that work, you sort of have, have to have this sort of defensive protection as well and ability to move the balls up the pitch, which is where Gronin comes in, which is where Katie Zellum comes in. Um, and I think, you know, what you've got here is you can see you've got your back four, which is nicely organised. You've then got your two midfielders in front, uh, Zellum in the yellow circle and, and uh, Gronin in the, in the red. And what they're essentially doing is offering that protection. But what that does with Manchester City in this case is it forces the attack to not come centrally. Um, now, any coach would, will, will tell you that one of the basics of football is to force the ball out to the wings because it is much easier to, to get it out and block across than it is to stop attack coming through the middle. So you've got Caroline Weir here, who's being forced out towards the wing, uh, which is exactly what, uh, what you want in this situation. 
Unfortunately for United, in this case, it goes the pass goes out to Hemp, who we know is brilliant one on one. So it kind of just de defeats the point. But it still stands that what Gronin is doing here is she's limiting the options of Manchester City and forcing the ball to go out that way, which in some ways also helps the other defenders because they know the ball is going to go there, so they can prepare earlier. So that's that was the thinking really with this one is that because she limits those options, she actually plays a really key role in dictating where opponents pass the ball and where um, the attack comes from. So that's that's really the key point there. So do you think that is deliberately set up by Mark to work in that way? Because like I said, we've seen different midfield combinations. Obviously, when Lad came in, it was pretty stable. It was kind of yeah. Lad, Zellam and Barisa when we went on that run in, yeah. in um, December. Obviously, Jackie wasn't really a part of it then. Do you think that is deliberate then when Jackie's on the pitch? Or do you think that is just Jackie's way of thinking that this is how I know to play to kind of, I mean, like you said there, I think, you know, anyone who's played football will tell you, coaches always say, show them out wide. That's always what you're taught as a, as a kid and, and anyone who's played football will tell you that. But do you think that's an instruction from Skinner or do you think that is just her kind of football? It's gonna, I'm going to mention this a lot throughout this, I think, but her kind of football intelligence to go, actually, she needs to be pushed out of that way. Yeah, no, I think that's more down to her footballing intelligence because it's something she does a lot, even when they're playing with different systems and slightly different tactics. She's always there getting in the faces of, uh, of opponents like she is with We're Here. So I think it's very much down to what she knows she needs to do rather than what Skinner's saying, here's what I want you to do on the pitch. So, yeah, I think for me, it's very much down to what, what she knows and what she does best. 100%. And I think defensively, United you know, last season wasn't, it wasn't awful. I think we did all right defensively, but I think mm. that that phrase, I don't think a lot of people like that phrase, double pivot, but um, it is the the way of explaining it because that is yeah. essentially what it is. Um, particularly when, like you said, it when it's Jackie and when it's uh, Katie in there. Um, moving on f to like a, an, an attacking sense, obviously something else is mentioned here. And I, I guess the word is presser or pressing the ball, um, as you can obviously see in that photo. But do you think that then again, so if you're playing in a midfield two, ideally you want one to go, one to sit. Um, yeah. That kind of link up, that communication between the two. Obviously mm -hmm. here, we've, there's a lot of red, obviously, in that. So it is quite a high line from a from a United point of view. But do you think maybe Jackie then, that's her better kind of abilities in terms of playing in that two, being the one that is the, the aggressor almost, being the one that's pressing from the front? Yeah, I think out of the two it probably is because she has that energy and that desire to go and have the ball, um, which means that she naturally goes up the field when it's anywhere near the opponent's box, like here with Spurs. So you've got Maeve Clemmer on there who is, uh, you know, trying to clear the ball. She's got her face, she's facing towards her own goal here, which I think is the key point to make. So, you know, she's in a tight space. She can't turn and move either way because she, Gronin is so close to her. Um, and that's that's really the, the key point here with Gronin is because she's got so tight that it means that Clemeron's only option here is to force the ball out of play, which is what that arrow shows. And the ball actually then just goes straight out of play, which means United have an attacking um, throw-in. So it really, really does benefit United to have grown and getting up the pitch and getting in the faces of, of these opponents. And it's, it's a similar point to last time. You know, she's getting in the faces, she's dictating play, she's limiting the options, and that is a huge benefit to United. And that's that's what's been shown in, in both section, both images in that section. Just off the back of that, because there's an interesting point there in the article in terms of the number of interceptions made. And obviously, interceptions, mm. you know, everyone knows what they are. But I think if I'm reading correct, there, it's more about actually positioning well. And we're, yeah. we're going to see that in the next uh, few things in terms of when we're talking about space awareness as well. But is that kind of the key point here that her, I, I'm going to use that word again, intelligence to get into that pressing position, but not pressing so much that you just you know all over the person because you know mm. if they turn you then obviously you're out of position but that kind of awareness just to get close enough to it's it's closing down the angles isn't it it's yeah absolutely it's forcing absolutely. them into a mistake yeah absolutely and and like i said in there she only makes they put 2.84 interceptions i think i put which isn't a lot when you come to think of it given how how high they are pressing and how tight they're getting but i think that's the point is that she isn't looking to make an interception and she isn't looking to win the ball what she's looking to do is to force the ball to go somewhere where United will have an advantage. Now, some might argue that making an inception here would get United into, into the goal area, but then you've got all these defenders around. So what she's trying to do is force the ball out of play so United can effectively reset. They've got an attacking throw in and they can then you know, position all their, their players around to make the pitch as big as possible. So that's the key thing here is, yes, she's getting tight to players, but she's not looking to win the ball necessarily. She, what she's looking to do is to dictate where the play goes, like I said, limiting their options. 
I think that is the key thing. So I think if you harry too much, now obviously yeah. the best example I can think of is Liverpool men's side. You know, you see them, they are constant pressure. Same with mm-hmm. Man City to an extent a couple of years ago. <clears throat> but I don't think United's fitness level is quite there to do that no. for a sustained period. And obviously Jackie, as we've seen throughout the, the last couple of seasons, she's got that fitness to be able to go up and down the pitch. So do you, I guess, do you think that that is kind of her role then in the team, that that is what we should be looking to do? Because not many other players, I don't think, have that ability to do what what's shown in that image there. I don't think I've seen that from too many other United players this season in terms of closing the angles, boxing teams in. That's not something we've seen from United last season. So, obviously, moving forward, obviously, if we are to keep her into next season, if we're going to do that, obviously, I'm, I'm assuming you're going to say yes to this, but Jackie, I'm assuming, is going to be a key part in in doing that in terms of boxing teams. And we see it with City all the time, the City women's side. That's what they do. They don't let you get out of your half. So, mm. is that kind of Jackie's role, to, obviously, if we can keep hold of her next season? I think so. And I think, in some ways, the midfield has to be built around her because you have to start with her and then think about, OK, which players are going to give her the best passing options? Which one's going to be more mobile around the pitch and drop when they need to and get long when they need to? So it does kind of come down to that. But, yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, Gronin's pressing and her intelligence around the pitch is so good that she has to be a key player for the United team if she stays. And I think United have to fight to keep her. Now, whether that happens, we don't know, and we'll come on to later on, I'm sure. Um, but I think at the moment, she is still there and they have to fight to keep her because she is that good. 100%. Um, just moving on slightly then to, to, to the seeing spaces part of this. Now, obviously, the, spatial awareness for me is one of the key things a footballer needs to have because I always say you can have all the ability in the world, but if you're not aware of what's around you, then you can't really use that talent uh, on the pitch as well. This is obviously is in a defensive um, uh, play first, so we'll, we'll focus on the defensive element first. Obviously, I, I don't actually... I was at this game. I don't remember that particular attack. <laughs> there was a lot of chances in that first half at Reading. It was yeah. a crazy half. Um, but w- what I think you're... If I, I'll let you kind of explain it, what's kind of going on here in terms of Jackie's awareness to, to get back into position. Because we do know with Skinner, the fullbacks are, are high and wide. So you are yeah. going to need somebody to, to drop into that position. Yeah, so basically what's happening here... So to give a bit of context, so Reading women struggled at the start of the season because they had Deanne Rose and Natasha Dowie, their two main attackers. Rose played a little bit further back, Dowie stayed a bit further forward. You had this enormous gap in the middle. They weren't linking up. Reading struggled. But as soon as they sort of married together, as they did, you know, four or five games into the season, maybe, Reading started to turn a corner, and that's what we've got here. So Rose became their sort of central attacker. So here what you've got is she's the sort of blue, this sort of outside um, blue circle further back. So she's passing into Emma, Emma Harries, who then sends it right back um, into that area, into the goal area, which is what the second blue arrow shows. And then as Rose passes, she then moves forward as the yellow arrow shows So she receives the return pass. So that's basically what's going with Reading. Now, what Gronin does is she sees this early. And as the red arrow shows, she gets into that position so that once Rose turns and looks to pull the ball back into the box, which she does, uh, Gronin is there to make the interception and put it out for a corner. Now, as you can see from this this uh, image, United didn't have the the defenders getting back at this stage, and uh, and and Rose would have been able to pull it back into free area had Gronin not been there. So this is about her seeing the, the open space in her own area and getting back to block it. Because as I said, had had she not done that, Reading would have had a chance on goal, uh, uh, you know, from a central area rather than just moving the ball out wide. So that's essentially what's going on here. Is because she sees the danger early. She's, she's ahead of her teammates and to some extent ahead of the um, opposition as well, Reading in this case. And she knows that that's where she needs to be. So she moves into that space and makes the block. Um, so that's showing really what's going on here. Um, and it's, it's her ability to spot danger in, in effect. Yeah. Yeah. And like I just said, I think that is, it, it, it is crucial in it because I can't actually see either fullbacks. I think that's Diane there. I think I can't quite work out from this image. That's definitely Maria there. And I think that's, on and potentially on the other side. Potentially, yeah, I can't see, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> well, it's, it's not that good. Um, so, yeah, when you're looking at kind of your high fullbacks, like I said, we know that Skinner mm. likes that honour and Hannah have been so high. And it's something that I've said all season that we need a midfielder to drop. Hayley Ladd does it, uh, obviously, best. She's yeah. probably the, the most natural at doing that. Mm. But do you think maybe Jackie can evolve into that Ladd role then? Because obviously I know later on it does say about kind of her, her positional um where, where her position should be but 
Do you think maybe Jackie could potentially become what lad is obviously to, to United now? And maybe because obviously we saw we don't want lad at, at centre half, but that's obviously where she played due to injuries at the back end of last season. But can Jackie maybe evolve into just playing that lone six and you have maybe Borisa and, and Zellam or Borisa and Tuna maybe ahead of her? Yeah, I think she can. And I do think that's where United are going, in, in, if I'm honest, because we've seen with United, she, uh, with, with Netherlands, um, she plays with that in that three. Um, and I think, you know, with United, she'll have that ability. She sees the, the danger here, so she can track back, she can get forward, she's got a good passing ability, she's got good vision around the pitch as well. So I think she can definitely hold that six role on her own and others can then play off her and get forward. Um, so, yeah, definitely. I think that's, as I said, in some ways, that's the way I think United are going um, because I think you've got Borisa and, and Toon, both obviously now quite attacking players. Um, Borisa has evolved. She came in as a slightly more defensive player. She's evolved into this attacking option now. We've seen her play almost in a 10 role at times in some of their lineups. So I think um, it's very much the case that actually we'll see Gronin drop back and almost be on her own whilst you've got, you know, we saw Zellum. She's got so many assists this season because she's been allowed to get further forward. And I think if they continue with that and have Gronin staying back, then, you know, that that is definitely something United can consider going forward. 100%, I think. That's going to be the key, I think, if we can keep hold of her, how we can, and I am going to ask this obviously a bit later on, but how we can fit all these players in, because not everybody can play all the time. No, I mean, that's a good no. thing. You look at you look at Chelsea and, and City and Arsenal, you know, they've got to rotate, and I think that's the level that, that we need to get to. But just before I move on to the next couple of images, because they're more uh, in kind of an, an attacking sense, do you think of just off the back of that kind of number six, because we're talking about spatial awareness here, and obviously the first one about limiting option, just kind of, Talk to me a little bit about kind of her tenacity then, because I think that's one quality I think United fans say that she she has in in, in abundance is her kind of almost like what Fred does in the men's game for, mm. for, for Man United as well. That kind of tenacity, like constantly harrying people and kind of being able to break up the play. Obviously, do you think that's her, her star ability? That obviously, I know we're going to get onto passing ability in a second, but kind of her tenacity to to win the ball back in, like obviously, which shows here with her spatial awareness as well. Yeah, I do. And and it's the same same as the previous point, really, in a lot of ways, in that she gets up to players. She has that ability to never give up. It's that sort of never say die attitude, whether that's making, um, you know, getting close to someone or whether that's, in that case, seeing the danger. But she knows that that's where the threat is um, and that's that's where the trouble is going to come from. So she knows that that's where it doesn't matter what the cost is, even if she's abandoning in a better position, she has to get there and either make that block or close that player down so it's very much a case of um you know seeing what's happening and reacting to it and that, that is something she does very well definitely and i think that kind of backs up if you flip it around obviously the next image is more of a, a of an attacking uh, sense now uh, when i looked at this image because I, I remember this game very well as well um and i think this shows skinner's kind of fluid fluidity um mm. in in the in the 11 that, that he chooses because you're looking at the team there now obviously I think this is off the back of a set piece because you've got Diana Maria very very high up so I'm assuming this has got to be off the back of a set piece but you're looking at Jackie there moving out wide now that's where you'd expect your natural winger to be um I can't actually remember who was out wide uh, on this day it may have been Martha Thomas uh, potentially but you're looking at Jackie there is that kind of and well, obviously we know it is, but that another area of obviously our game, it goes goes back to spatial awareness, really. But do we want to see her out there? Um, obviously, as United fans, we want to see her down the centre, you know, down the middle, and that's kind of a best position. But obviously, you know, Netherlands tweeting today, last time they played England, she had that good assist from from out wide. So I think it's kind of, she, in my opinion, I don't think you can be six and eight and a ten. I think you are one of them. <laughs> um, but we're seeing there, that's almost like Jackie playing in a 10 position because she's so far, you know, it's great that she's reading the play, but she's going out wide, or almost in a winger position as well. So, I mean, just talk to me a little bit about that image then. And whether that's, obviously, we know it's a positive thing, her being able to, to read the game um, and, and move out wide, but whether that's a good, you know, that she can do all of it, it's kind of a bit of a headache for Skinner finding her best position in the squad. Yeah, it is. And I think in this case, it is a one-off because I think it, it does come from a set piece. Yeah. But essentially what you've got is she's seen that Arsenal are really narrow at the back. You, you know, right next to her, you've got the four 
defenders. Now, whether that's Arsenal's back four or not, depending on whether they, you know the set piece, the players have just sort of jumbled together. But you've got your, you've got four players at the back. Let's just say that's a back four. They're really narrowly packed together, which means there's a lot of space out wide, and that's what Grunen's seen. That's that's part number one of this image. The other part is the fact that you can see I can't remember which player it is, but in in the yellow circle, that's that's obviously be her teammate with the ball at that point, that point in time. Now, what you've got in the white circle is Viviane Miedemar, who is going out to close the ball down and trying to limit what that player can do. So it's a bit like what we saw from Gronin in the previous images. She's trying to limit options. And by putting herself in that position, she's prevented the, the inside pass. So now, realistically, United can only pass either sideways, backwards, or out wide into the space where Gronin's going. So it's, you know, Gronin has obviously seen the space, but she's now allowing a team to play around Miedemar as well, which is really important. And I think, you know, when you're playing Arsenal, taking Miedemar out of the game, as I put in the article, is always a good option because as soon as she's out of the game, you know you've got a chance. Um, and we've seen Miedemar play a little bit deeper in some games once Blackstenius has come in because of the way that they've structured that their attack. So um, it's very much a case, as I said, it's not her natural position for me because she's not the best crosser in the world, a crosser of the ball, that is, uh, just to be absolutely clear. <laughs> and... Um, but, you know, her crossing accuracy, accuracy was not amazing last season. So when she does get into these areas, it's more likely that she'll receive the ball and then look to pull back inside rather than send the ball directly in. Um, and so it, it's not her natural position. She is much better in a more central role. But it does help to to have her in this sort of this area and knowing that she can see the spaces, she can, she can affect the game and she can allow her teammates to keep passing forwards as well, which is really important when, you, when you're in this situation because if you pass sideways or backwards, Momentum's gone. Arsenal can reset. They can get players back. The gap that was previously there is gone. So it's really important to keep the ball moving forwards. And that's exactly what Gronin's doing here. Yeah, I think when you look at <clears throat> uh, football in a in a more complex term, it's all about you kind of your, your triangles and your patterns of play and all of that kind of thing. Mm. I mean, that's a whole other conversation. But when you're looking at it there, you've got to, if you want to pass the ball forwards, you've got to create the opening for yourself. And I, I say that a lot. Well, I said it a lot with United last season. I felt like a lot of the players mark themselves out of the game and I think you're seeing the complete opposite with Jackie that Jackie could quite easily I don't know whether this is going to show up whether you can see my mouse or not but Jackie could quite easily just drop into the center here yeah where the ref is but instead like you said her kind of awareness to go further out wide it opens up another angle uh for the pass rather than like I said the safer option would have been just to come inside and you play it across, you know, you go into Maria, that or into Tuna, you go into Maria, and you just play it across the line, um, which we see a lot with United. Um, so that kind of awareness to, to to move out wide is something I think United have been missing. It it leads. I want to use the next image for this because I think um, the the question I had looking at this next uh, the, the last two images and this one, um, uh, and I, I'm going to ask you this question in terms of. Do we think that maybe the players are not on her wavelength at times throughout the game? Because we're seeing here, obviously, I think you've highlighted, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong here, but that maybe she's not stood in the correct position for the phase of play that United are in, in this in this attacking transitional play, that Jackie's maybe not in the correct position here. Um, or maybe she is if some of the other players were moved in and around her. But I guess that's the question, obviously, off the back of this image. Is she on a maybe a a different wavelength to some of the other players that she's thinking two steps ahead and some of the other players are only thinking one step ahead, potentially. I think that is part of it. I mean, what I tried to show in this image is that I think she's in the right position because she's she's in the D. She's almost part of the second phase. So the ball will go in. You've got one, two, three. You've got at least four players ahead of her in that sort of in the six-yard area or around the six-yard area. So they're going to be part, they're going to be the first phase. They're going to be the targets for the cross. What Gronin's doing here is she's almost readying herself so that uh, if I think it was City in this case, if City did clear the ball, she's there ready to pounce on any rebounds, either to shoot at goal or uh, to to play another pass into a forward area or side area, but to keep the attack going. Um, so, and it's, it's it's something we've seen a lot from from Gronin over this the, the last season is, is for her to get into the into the D or around the D in these situations. She almost sits and waits for that second phase. Um, what goes wrong here is that Hannah Blundell, who is in the yellow circle, comes in um, and you know she wins the ball. But what she then does is she moves into the area where Gronin is currently. She moves into the D. So, of course, Gronin sees that. She tries to get out of the way, but Blundell's shot hits her on the shoulder, goes over the bar. So it is a case of, you know, two players in one area trying to fight for the same territory didn't quite work. So... Yeah, it, it, you're right to say, you know, sometimes they aren't on the same wavelength. Um, Gronin is perhaps one step ahead of her teammates. 
Um, but what I've tried to show here is effectively the fact that she's in the right area. It just, you know, she where she can have an effect for her team, but sometimes her teammates aren't quite awake to that, which means that they go for the territory where she is. So had Blundell stayed back here or maybe gone uh, around her, you know, Gronin would have had the ball and she's in a great position to have a shot at goal. So it does just come down sometimes to perhaps not having the, the right amount of commun communication and being on the, on the same wavelength. Yeah, because I was going to just, obviously it's very easy to do, to, to break down um, uh, still images of uh, uh, of games and say, oh, she should have passed there, I think, because obviously in real time, obviously it's a little bit different. When you are looking at that, the pat, obviously the ref is actually in the way there. Um, yeah, that's poor yeah. positioning from the referee, but I'm not going <laughs> not going uh, <laughs> to dive into that one. But obviously that <laughs> that pass should be going into Jackie. Ideally. Yeah, on an uh, in an ideal situation. Yeah, but I, th I think off the back of that, something that I will mention actually before we move on to the kind of passing ability in terms of why you think maybe Jackie is not taking as many uh, shots at goal as as we'd like it to. Obviously, now as as United fans, we all want Jackie to score. The fact the chant always goes around the ground. You know, if Jackie scores, we're on the pitch and that kind of thing. And why? Because we always see it for Nella. She's got a fantastic shot on her, but we don't seem to, or she doesn't. Have, I, don't, I, don't, I don't quite know what it is. What What do you think it is then? Because as you've shown there in that image, she gets into the positions. Whether she receives the ball or not is a different question. But when she does get the ball, she doesn't seem to want to shoot at the moment. And do you, do you think there's any particular reason for that? Yeah, I suppose it could come down to tactics. I suppose it come, could come down to the way they've been coached. Because essentially, if Jackie's been told, you know, her role is to be the sort of harasser in the field to try and win the ball and disrupt play and all that sort of stuff, then she'll go into that game knowing, well, scoring goals is not necessarily my job. That's down to the Toons, the Hansons, the Goltons, the Russos and, and Thomases and whoever else is out there that, that day. So perhaps that means that when she gets into their, that area, she doesn't have the confidence to go, you know what, I'll have a shot here actually rather than passing. She instantly then looks to pass into one of those aforementioned players who obviously we know are really good uh, at shooting and scoring. So I think that's maybe what it comes down to is perhaps tactics and coaching and things like that. So Yes, yeah, she gets into the right areas, but she doesn't necessarily have the confidence to then finish the job off, if you like, um, which is probably why she's had quite a few efforts this season that have then gone over the bar or missed the target. It just comes down to confidence to, that, to know that she's in the right area, have a shot. And as you said in the stands, you know, the, the fans are urging her to have a shot. But I think it just comes down to the fact that perhaps she's been coached that it, it's not her role, if you see what I mean. Which, it does sound a bit stupid in a way, but... You know, that's maybe the way they, they've coached them. And, you know, Mark Skinner's maybe said defensive, you know, centre-backs, your role is to move the ball forwards and, and to obviously protect the, the goal. Full-backs get high and wide. Uh, Jackie, I need you to stay a little bit further back. Just move forward a bit. When you're in these situations, go into the deep. But don't go and involve yourself in the first phase. Be ready for the second phase. So it's about sort of every player sort of has a particular role. And Gronin's maybe is not to shoot at goal. Or maybe that's not what they see it as. But... You know, she gets into these areas, so why not? Yeah, because one of the points that I, I had written down in terms of do, do we think Jackie's more than kind of her direct numbers? Because I think if you looked at goals and assists, obviously it's not looking great for her. But do, no. do we think her kind of positional play and awareness is generating more goals for United just by being in the position she's in? Because when players are looking around at players to mark, if you're seeing Jackie like, like on the edge of D there, somebody, as soon as they notice she's there, is going to be closing her down and locking that space off which then frees the space for Hannah to run on the overlap and go outside so do you think her kind of positional play is maybe opening up more opportunities even though it's not leading to direct assists and goals yeah I do and I think that's something United need to consider going forwards particularly you know, into next season is if she gets into these areas they need to almost allow her to take the shackles off in a way just have the freedom to have a shot at goal because I think that would give her more confidence as well. She's a great player as it is, but it would give her more confidence in the final third that when she gets into the position and the ball comes to her, she can have a shot at goal. She doesn't need to think about, oh, no, I can't shoot. I've got to find someone to pass to. So, yeah, I think, you know, it, it does come down to the numbers aren't great, but there is potential there for them to increase those numbers. You know, one assist and no goals all season for United is, is grim reading, but it's not because she doesn't get in the right position. I think it, it is just because it isn't her role, if you see what I mean. Yeah, and I said, hopefully, if she does stick around, we do see a couple more goals from the next yeah. season. Like I said, she has got a shot on at Birmingham away. I mean, that was whiskers away from flying in the mm. top left. That would have been some goal. She's hit the bar, obviously, at Chelsea away. She's had chances this season. I think yeah, there absolutely. was a couple of, absolutely. Mm. couple of chances at LSV as well, where she's on the edge of the box. It's like, just hit that. Come on. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, almost, yeah. it's almost a better option to shoot, you know, yeah. in those scenarios. But 
So hopefully next season, if we can keep hold of it, we do see more of that because uh, I think fans would want to see it regardless. Obviously, if the if the pass is the better option, hundred percent. But sometimes it, it it is it's becoming almost detrimental that she she doesn't shoot sometimes. Um, and like you said, maybe that's a confidence thing that whether she's being told not to, whatever it is. But she's got the ability, you know, hundred percent. So. Yeah. Um, just moving on then, to obviously, to, to, to wrap up this this uh, this article, obviously, it's about passing ability. Now, one of the things I think United fans love about Jackie, apart from a kind of tenaciousness and all, that, all of those kind of things, the composure on the ball is is the one thing that I always notice of her. Um, and her kind of ability, obviously, on the ball following that. So, obviously, this first image, I don't know if you want to take through, uh, take us through what's happening here, and obviously, we can dive in a little bit more into her, her abilities there. Yeah, so essentially what I've done with this section is I thought actually what we've done so far is shown her positional awareness and the fact that she disrupts play, which none of which actually shows that she's good on the ball as well. So it, as I said in, in the article, it'd be fair to assume or forgivable to assume actually she does all that because she's not great on the ball. Actually, that's not the case. She's brilliant on the ball and that's what this section shows. So here you've got Best City women who had a slight revival at the end of the season Um and, you know, they got really tight here. They've, they've closed the space down. Now, it would be very easy for Jackie Grown and bear in mind where she is and how close she is to the sideline to just go, you know, I don't know, uh, put the ball out of play or turn into, into trouble and lose the ball. What she doesn't do, but she doesn't do that. What she does do is to then keep her head up, look around. She sees the pass available and she makes that pass that fo forwards as the red arrow shows. Now, that covers a significant amount of ground, which means United have kept the momentum going as well. So... It's a case really of not not getting flustered when you get into these these tight positions. Keep the head up, keep the ball going, and you know move it out of danger. And her teammate in this case that that receives the ball is in a large amount of space, so they've got time to control it, pick the pass, you know, find where the the, the next best option is. So that all comes down to the fact that Jackie didn't give up in this situation uh, and kept you know kept her head up and kept looking around. And it's like what I said previously, she's got great vision around the pitch. So she can see spaces, she can see different options um, and she can see little gaps here and there like the one here that she passes to, uh, passes through. So, yeah, it, it is just a case of playing out of dangerous situations well and keeping your head up. 100%. So I think just looking at it, I didn't realise there's a United player there as well, right yeah. on the touchline. So the easiest pass is that one. Um, yeah. Or you you try and Cruyff turn it and you go back you know to the, to your centre backs in in in, the, in that position, but that's a risky uh, risky game to be playing inside your own half. Um, but yes, yeah, so like you said, the awareness to to thread that ball through. I think that's how a two and come in deep uh, to pick yeah, that I ball think up. Obvious, yeah. The other thing I took away from this image in particular is the gap you're looking between Katie and and Jackie in this in this position, and it kind of goes back to what we were saying before in terms of Jackie's position being that kind of deeper liar. Um, midfielder and being able to play the, the long passes is that kind of where you see her game from a passing point of view that that kind of almost like quarterback role where you kind of the the, the balls over the top the kind of and I think that next image I believe if I scroll down almost shows it on a counter-attacking um sense that that kind of uh, that threaded pass almost kind of split in the fullback and the center back up which kind of role do you I mean she can obviously clearly do both but do you think is the the better for her that kind of playing a little bit more advanced and playing the intricate pass through or that kind of ability to play it long over the top and switching the play from a deeper role? I think the deeper role, because I think it gives her more of the pitch ahead of her, which means she's got more space and she can see more going on ahead. So, um, I mean, you look at that image and you can see this is on the move, which is really important because that shows a different um, different uh, element to her game as well, because what we've seen so far is everything she's done has been fairly mobile, uh, fairly uh, stationary even. Um, this is now more mobile. So she's on the move. She's taking the ball out herself rather than just looking and passing instantly. Um, and she's seen, uh, I think it was yeah, Leah Galton uh, in the yellow circle, if I remember rightly. So what she sees is Galton's on the move. She's got the space ahead of her. Um, and she knows that the pass has to go there because Birmingham is so spread out. Um, in this game, Birmingham sat back and it was really, really difficult for United to, to build play because all they had was 11 players between them and the goal. So it was a case of a lot of sideways passes and having to be patient. And this situation, because they've been caught out on the counter-attack, the space is there. So they've got to take it. Um, unfortunately, in this case, Goulton's effort doesn't find the target, so it doesn't turn into anything. But the intent was there. And that's what's important is because you, you've played that pass, Birmingham now have, now think next time, oh, we can't do that because last time we did that, they, they passed right through us. 
So, um, you know, Gronin in there is, has a really key role in building play, but it's also about, again, seeing the opportunity and taking it uh, when it's there, which I think builds into the next point as well. Um, if, yeah. Yeah, can I just scroll down there? No, I think, I believe this is, the, yeah, the, the the last image on here in terms of, again, this is a little bit more of a deeper, I mean, it's not deep because obviously you're inside, um, uh, inside the opposition half, but that kind of, you see that, I'll let you kind of explain it in more detail, but you see obviously the triangle of Birmingham there, but that ability to play that little one-two into the space. So she, like you said before, she can she can do it all, that that. The long pass, you know, threaded through as we saw in the first image, the composure on the ball when you're running at pace, at pace on the counter attack to thread it through, but also in here that awareness to to play the little one two into the little space that you see there. Yeah, so so what you've got here is exactly what I said. So it's a Birmingham have all sat back behind the ball, and you can see they've got these three players, which is Jade Pennock, Harriet Scott, and Eleanor Ryan Doyle, forming this triangle. Um, now, what that's essentially done is is to create the, to limit the space for United to play in um, but what you've got uh, um, outside is you've got Hannah Blundell who's on the near side and then you've got Ella Toon on the the uh, far side of that triangle um, and what United did a lot of in this situation or in these situations during the game is they played a lot of sideways passes and they had to be really patient before looking for the balls through now what Gronin did is she kind of ignored that a little bit she played these forward passes and then made forward runs she saw that yes, this was there was you know two well organised ranks from Birmingham uh, at times that made it difficult to play through, but she knew there was still an opportunity there. So she passed the ball into tune here as the red arrow shows before then instantly making that run into the middle of the triangle to receive the um, the return pass. On this situation, tune didn't make the return pass. She turned and then played across the pitch to Zellum and it went all the way over to the other side of the pitch. But again, the intent is there, and again because she's done it, uh, Birmingham now think we've got to watch her because she will make runs and try and cut between us. Um, and we saw another example as well in that game where she got into a, a good position just just in front of the two Birmingham players uh, and then played right through them and, and set up a chance. I can't remember who it went to, but it went to a player behind that line. So um, it's all about seeing the opportunities and taking them, which comes down to, again, her intelligence, her vision, her ability to make passes and almost to take control of situations as well, because her team were trying, not, not that they weren't trying, they, they you know, they were just facing a low block, which made it really hard for them to create chances. Um, and Gronin was the one who said, well, hang on a sec. We've got the ball here. I'm going to send it through and let's see what happens. Um, and unfortunately, as I said, some of her, her um, teammates weren't quite on the same wavelength at times. So to not seeing the, the return pass instead of passing across, meaning that the momentum wasn't taken. Um, but, you know, it, it's about having that confidence on the ball to make the pass, make the run, see what happens and and like i said even if it doesn't work which it didn't this time um and it didn't in the last uh, occasion as well it's all about making birmingham think you know next time jackie gets into this area they know they've got to either close her down even quicker or be tighter around where the, those three players are at the minute to stop her making the run into that area so it just comes down to the fact that she's just putting doubts in the back of their mind um so yeah 100 percent. that is something that we've lacked uh, i think we've lacked that all season that being able to break down uh low blocks we saw it at west ham we saw it at aston villa we've had it a couple of times those frustrating draws that we've had spurs away was pretty similar as well we've had a lot of those games and that is ultimately what what cost us in the end um just looking to wrap up obviously that this piece then obviously we're, we've got about five or ten minutes left to, to look to wrap up then so obviously you've, you've written all of this um you know the qualities are uh, as most United fans do as well, of what Jackie's got. What are your kind of your summary then of her uh, last season and what do United need to do to try and keep hold of her and how important is it that United keep hold of her? Because um, judging by this and by obviously the reaction that you know we see online at the moment, it, it would be a, a devastating loss if she was to move on. Yeah, I think they do have to keep hold of her. Um, I think it's going to be really tricky to replace her because she does a lot of the stuff that you don't find in, in too many players. So getting any kind of replacement who will do exactly the same thing is going to be nigh on impossible. Um, but, you know, what they have to do is try and find some way to keep playing on her wavelength, if you see what I mean. So in that last image, you know, someone who can see that what she's trying to do there is keep the ball moving forwards rather than playing sideways. She's trying to make something happen. 
Um, and it's like I put in that title, fighting intelligence. They're the two key elements here. Fight because she gets tight to players. She shows a good desire when she's at the back. She gets back and makes uh, significant defensive um, influence on the game. Intelligence because she passes well. She has good vision. Um, she has a lot of the pitch ahead of her. She can see opportunities ahead of her as well and ways to break through uh, defensive lines as well. And so she's got a sort of attacking element, that defensive element. She's she's an all-round midfielder. She could play the six. She could play a slightly further forward role in the, in that three if you wanted to, like with the Netherlands. Um, so she she brings a lot to the team. Actually, United fans will see, but other fans won't necessarily see. Um, and she disrupts play. And it is it's, because she doesn't make interceptions and clear balls, it's not as obvious. But it's little things like getting tight to Caroline Weir and forcing her to play out wide like forcing Mabel Clemmer on to put, to put the ball out of play. Someone else might see that and go, oh, well, she's obviously just run out of options. Well, yeah, she ran out of options because she's been forced to do that. So, yeah, it, it does come down to that. But I think the, the thing for United is Juventus, who are the, the club widely rumoured to be interested in signing her, they've just signed uh, today Sarah Bjork, Gunners, De- Gunners daughter. Uh, that, that one's now apparently a confirmed deal. She's also a midfielder. Um, slightly different midfielder but maybe because Juventus have got that maybe they'll go off Gronen they might not but it, it's a possibility so there are still there are still solutions that can be had to keep Gronen at the club but I think with United not having the Champions League I think it's going to be tight because ultimately she is a full international uh, she's been there three years now she'll want to go and compete in in the Champions League I'm sure like any player does um, and you wonder whether she'll see one more season at United and try and do that, try and get into the Champions League or whether she'll say I've had three years, you know, we haven't managed to do it. It's, it's a tight one. It's a, it's a difficult one. I think if she does go, she'll be difficult to replace though. That's the key, isn't it? I think we'll probably do the the, the option, the, you know, the year option, but then, you know, I, I think that's the same for a lot of our players, actually. I think they'll give us one more year. If we don't get Champions League next year, then I think we'll be seeing a mass exodus um, yeah. next summer. Um, one of the final questions I wanted to round up on then, um, everyone wants to see uh, Jackie, Vilda, Tooney, all in the same team. Um, is there a way from what you've seen that we can fit um, Jackie, Vilda and, and Tooney all into the same squad? Because if you're putting those three in a midfield three, like I said, Jackie has to be the, the sitting six then. Um, Vilda is the eight, Tooney is the ten. Um, or you put Tooney out wide and you have to put Lads in there. I mean, c- can you see a possibility that all three of those can play? It's a difficult one because I think what Casey Stoney did well if she had that sort of the pivot in, in attack with Ella Toon, who sat sort of just behind the, the striker and acted as, like I said, a pivot. So passes came into her and she passed out to them. She sat in the holes as that 10. This season has been slightly different because, yes, they've still got a 10, but they've now got a slightly more, you know, 4 2 3 1 or a, a 4 1 4 1, however Mark Skinner's playing it. Um, so it's been slightly more difficult to, to play that way. Um, but I think what you've got is, is if Gronin stays a little bit further back and has a slightly more defensive role, Vilda Burry, so we know she came in as a defensive player. She's played in that 10 role, so we know she can play that way. She's got um, good ability and she can see space as well. Good passing ability uh, as well. Tooney, I think, is a slightly more difficult one because for me, as a winger, I don't think she's necessarily a winger. She did play as a false nine as well at the start of the season. Not sure whether that works well, but it's still an option. Um, and I think with Martha Thomas and obviously Alessia, Alessia Russo in the team, I know Russo's obviously turned down a new contract, but for this season, um, if she's there as well, you know, you've got your options in, in attack. Where does Tooney fit in? It's a difficult one. Um, but I think maybe if they revert to a 4-3-3, that might work because you'd have Gronin, uh, you know, in, that, in the centre, and then you could have Burisa and Toon sort of slightly off her, getting forward and offering options and then obviously both able to then play forward uh, passing passes forward into the the forward line that's maybe the way that you could do it but i can't see any other way of getting all the players kind of fitting into their natural roles otherwise it is a tough one it's a conversation we're sure going to be having all summer uh, on this one i'm going to round it off before we uh, before we wrap up with just a quick fire question to yourself then uh, are we going to see jackie grown in, in a man united shirt at the start of next season Um. Yes, I like that. 
you can come back. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really difficult one, yeah. <laughs> it, it, it is a tough one, like I said, these conversations. And obviously with the Euros, I think the conversations or the rumours will slow down a little bit because players are not going to want these conversations in and around them as the as the tournament's going on. But yeah, I'm sure this conversation will be happening right up until the first day. I, I'm not believing anything until she lines up on the first day. Same with Honor and, and Russo, until they yeah, line yeah, up I'm, on the first game of the I'm season. With you. <laughs> that's the only time i'll believe it um david you've been absolutely fantastic thanks for for coming on if people want to check sure. out your stuff and and where to find you where, where can people do that uh so if you go to the total football analysis website uh you can find the stuff on there um you can also follow me on twitter which is at david p astell 21 um and i post all my links on there and, and loads of comments analysis retweets things like that so if you want to engage with anything I have to say or any of my articles, then feel free to comment on there. Um, that they're the best ways probably. I'm on LinkedIn and Instagram and everything like that as well. So yeah. Definitely, definitely go and check out David's stuff. It'll all be in the comments as well when this uh, when this video goes out. So we'll put all the links to all of that. And make sure you check out the Euros one as well. I'll put all that in the description as well because I had a brief read of it just before we came on and it's uh, it's about 180 pages, I believe. Yeah, something <laughs> so like that. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a big read, but it looks absolutely fantastic to so check that one out as well. Um, we'll be back all next week as well with all uh, Euros content, obviously leading up to. We're only about a week and a half away now, so it's uh, it's yeah. all coming. So yeah, we've got all of that to look forward to. But David, thanks again for coming on, and we'll Not see you guys soon.